Amen. Brother Donnie. Have yeah, Bible's going to turn with us to First uh, Second Timothy, chapter three. So you may wonder why I don't kneel in altar prayer. You take a crane and get me up. Uh, I can't get up and down anymore. Uh, my knees won't allow me to let. That maneuver, um, I do good. Get out of a chair. <clears throat> we think about Second um, Timothy third chapter. And I think about uh, today's situation in, in America, and uh, it seems like just one big mess going on. But you know we. Uh, Roe versus Wade and all that overturned, and uh, you see people out there are hooping and hollering and going on with their bullhorns and protesting and different things. But you know, God knows what He's doing, and uh, He put those men in charge to make a decision, and they they made it, and uh, we and they got to stand by it, uh, and I'm. I hate to think about all the babies that have been uh, taken throughout the years from 19 to 73. Uh, uh, big, big, big bunch, no doubt. I'd like to begin reading in verse 1. Uh, you pray for me tonight. It's been a long time since I stood, uh, I stood here. Uh, so, verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, plowed, blasphemers, disobedient, to parents unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. When I was, I was thinking about and looking over this chapter, uh, I got to read on down a lot, a lot more. But I really want to focus on those first five verses of what it, it speaks to you and I. That uh, the, in the day of which we live, uh, it's, I don't want to preach or talk tonight about doom and gloom, but uh, I think about today in which we live, we, we are living in perilous times. And it says uh, here, know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. It's here. It's here. And uh, you and I, we must uh, be about the Father's business, helping others to see that we are living in those days uh, as spoke of here. And, uh, and you could tell what's, what's, what's happening in uh, verse 6, the second verse. said, men, should, men should be lovers of their own selves. Um, uh, we, he talks about the selflessness of man. Uh, they, they want uh, what they want, and they go uh, to different lengths to get what they want. Uh, whether it's uh, shooting someone or uh, or uh, going out and robbing stores or, or beating someone up, uh, so we see that that takes place. Uh, as I said they're covetous; uh, they won't, 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 and they and they they try to get it in any way. They're boasters and proud. You see a lot of people they boast of what I've got. Look what I've done, or look what what's happened here, and, you know. And uh, uh, then it says they're proud, proud. We have nothing in this nation to be proud of, do we? Nothing. 
to be, we need to be proud of one thing, that God loves us, and God saved us, and God is for us. And, and if he's for us, no one could be against us. And we need to take pride in, in uh, what we do for him and do the, the best of our ability. Uh, when I was saved at the age of 16, I knew, I knew nothing about salvation. I knew nothing about the word. Mom and dad didn't take us to church. We walked to church uh, 12, 12 straight weeks to get a Bible. Now, Phyllis and Marion, they, they, were, they were saved in this church, the Corinth Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, I felt that tug, but I didn't accept. I didn't go. And I probably reaped the consequences that were over and over again. And we finally moved back to Tennessee and my Uncle Fred took me to church. And because of that, I'm here today, saved by the grace of God. And I'm thankful for that. We ought to be thankful for what the God has done for you and I. And, and uh, knowing that what he's done and, and uh, the places he's, uh, where he brought us from to where we are today, I was in Amari Clays of Sin. And when he picked me up out of that and set me on the good, solid foundation, it made a big difference in my life. I no longer cursed or told the jokes. Uh, was disobedient to parents. I, I very seldom was disobedient to parents because I probably wouldn't be here today because they were, they were pretty strict. Uh, especially mama, uh, she didn't care to get that belt out or, or get a switch or a uh, fly swat, and sometimes anything she'd get hold of. Uh, and I was, a, I guess in a way, I'm not bragging or boasting, but I was a troublemaker. How many of you are, are middle kids, middle child? Jane, Kathy, anybody else? Wanda, Dillard, the middle, Jerry, all right. So in my situation, I got blamed for everything. Blamed for it. You know, if I, whether I did it or not, mom would ask, who did it? And they say, Donnie did it. <laughs> Donnie did it. Whether I did it or not, Donnie did it. Well, when, uh, Kai, Kai is the middle one at the house, the grandkids that are at the house. And uh, same thing took over. If something happened, Kai did it. I can hear Caden say that, Kai did it. Yeah. So, you know, and it's, it's just something funny about that. You know, I, you get blamed for something you don't do, kind of makes you mad, doesn't it? You know, you, you, sometimes you just want to get even. But you know, you, people today, they, they want to blame you. Just like this thing here, they, they want to blame you for the, for the, the, the vote. They, don't want, they, they say a loving God would not allow that to happen, that vote. They're, bl they're, don't, they're not blaming God, they're blaming you and me. They want, they, they want to close the doors because of it. They said it wasn't right. Our God would never allow that to happen, or what they're saying. But I'll tell you what, I believe God allowed it to happen, and it just happened just the right time. And we need to be thankful of what God has done. And... Uh, when we think about uh, how uh, men become lovers of self, lovers of their own selves, and uh, covetous and boasters, and proud and, and blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and, and we, we see that uh, running wild today. 
they're, they're disobedient and, and uh, they don't want to listen to parents. They want to go their own way, do their own thing. Uh, they'd rather sit behind uh, the old Xbox or whatever and play their games rather than to go out and mow the yard or work. Now, we need to have a, a mind that at work. We got to work for the Lord. We got many out in sin today that that need to, that they need salvation, and it, you and I could go out and we can uh, uh, help them to see their need for the Lord, and they the people need the Lord today more today than they ever did. Time is growing short, I believe. You know, we don't know the day nor the hour when he shall come and uh, rapture his church out. If you go back over in, in Thessalonians and read that for yourself, how they thought they had done missed the mark. That'd be an awful, awful feel, wouldn't it? When everybody's gone and you're left behind, you missed the mark. But that's what they had the, the thought of. They did. They done missed the mark, and they were concerned. And Paul straightens them out. Listen, listen to me. He says, "You've not missed the mark. For the for the the, the Lord it will come back in due time, and rapture His church out." The church? Who is the church? If you're saved tonight, you can raise your hand. You are the church. And you know, and think about what it says that, that you and I, we were raptured out, we called out to meet them that's gone on before us in the air. The great part is it that we, we shall be with them forever. And we shall meet them in the air, and we shall be there forever. Won't be cast out. I think about the devil and his angels being cast out of, of heaven because he made himself equal. Made himself equal. And you and I, we've got something to look forward to today. We got a, we're going to a place where there won't be any sickness, no sorrow, or no more pain. I was talking to Linda back there about the pain that she has. She's had surgery about the same time I did in her, in her, her replay replacement. And she suffered pain. I suffered pain. I still suffer pain. I, I can't get up or down. I, I'm falling on different things. Uh, I think James' spirit is behind me pushing me down sometimes. But this... If, it hurts to fall, and uh, it hurts to try to get up. It hurts to try to get out of that chair. It hurts to go down the steps. And I thank, thank Brother Vance over here for what he's done for me. He took it on to put a grill together. He took it on to, to stand, withstand the heat out there and cook those burgers uh, for, for, for uh, Friday night. And I appreciate that. Uh, But you and I, we're going to a place. Be no parting, departing over there. No sickness, no more pain. Then it talks about being unthankful, unholy. Do you ever see a nation that is today, how it's unthankful and unholy? They want everything their way. They're not thankful for anything that they get or have. They want to destroy what, what's around. You know, up in Oregon and then places up there in the cities, they, they absolutely destroyed a city. And that's what I like about Tennessee. <laughs> I think we got some sense. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't allow these things to happen. But we find also in verse 3, it says, without natural affection. When you think about that unnatural affection, 
It's not right man with man and woman with woman. It's unnatural. Unnatural. And we've got to realize that. We've got to pray for these folks. And not only that, we find the truth breakers and false accusers and um, incontent and fierce despisers of those that are good. We've got folks today that are despised, you and I. They despise what we stand for. We stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And they despise him and they despise us of what we stand for. They don't want to hear what you and I have to say. They just want to pass it off. I don't need that. Don't need it. That's sad. They do need it more than they realize. When I was in the army, I uh, talked to a young man and uh, led him to the Lord. And uh, this one guy jumped in and says, I don't believe that. He said, my, my dad is a preacher. He said, all we ever went to to his church church i don't believe in a, that i said that's that's your that's your that's your feelings but i know i know that he he loves you and you're 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 uh not only are you bad mouth and lord you're bad mouth your father his father is preacher i don't i don't hear that it's sad but he, he didn't want to admit the goodness of God. He didn't want to admit what, his, what, what had took place in the church there where uh, his, his father had took him. So the, the spies are you and I are good. And, and they want today to close the doors of this church. Our government is working, supposedly, to close the doors to the churches. They're, they're, they're talking about bankrupting all the churches, and I don't see how they do it without, I really don't. Our God is more powerful. Our God will step in. The, the, the only way they'll, they would actually close the doors of this church, you turn around and walk out and don't, don't come back. It's up to us, isn't it? It's up to you and I to keep the doors open. Why do we want to keep the doors open? We've got Bryson back there. Probably the youngest one. We've got Caden on this side. We've got Katie uh, and others. David over here. We've got to keep it going for them. We've got to keep praying for them, praying for your pastor. He, he put the has a, that has that message on his heart that will draw them, not only them, but us. We need prayer. This church needs prayer. This community needs prayer. Our families need prayer. And we could come around this altar and, and pray for them, our, and I will pray for not only them, but for the teachers that teach them. That teach them. They need to be taught. And I, and, and I think about not only taught, but they need to be led by a godly teacher. And as hopefully be in that situation, they be godly parents that get behind them and help them. So we, we, we got to think about that. And it says about traitor and high, heady and high-minded. Bob tells us not to think of ourselves any more highly than we ought to. But we find a lot of hey, hey, high-minded. Uh, you know, look at me. I've got a Cadillac. I've got a suit, a tie. I've got this, I've got that, I've got a boat. You know, all this stuff. That stuff doesn't matter. What matters is what's in here. What he's done for us. 
There's nothing wrong with having a boat. I've got one over there. The house, it don't run. <laughs> it don't run. It's a uh, carpet needs replaced. Um, what else, Jane? Oh, we had to put tires on to get it home. And wheels. So uh, it's really, most people look at it and consider it a piece of junk. But I've got, me and Steve got plans for it. Maybe to fix it up. Get out in the water and drown a worm. Or drown ourselves trying. That's, but, you know, we take pleasures in too much different things that don't matter. We need to be more lovers of God than the lovers of pleasures and the different things that <clears throat> we think we've got to have. I'm thankful for my home and uh, I'm glad he allowed me to purchase that home. I've got my wife, myself, and I raised two dollars there. I've got a son-in-law and a daughter and I live living there and three grandkids, three dogs, two cats, a slew of go fish and what three turtles four turtles but the house is lived in it's not some fancy mansion but it's a house that is lived in and that's what god expects us to do to, to take it to, to use that what he's given us and to live in it because he's given it to us to live in and and, and to take care of you know, and that's a place where we can come in and we can meet around the table and we can have a good meal together and pray and ask the petitions of a heart. That's a great thing. It's family. It's when we come in this church every every Sunday, the Sunday night, Wednesday night, it's a it's a it's a family gathering. We're all a family. We belong to him. He's our father. And we're his children if we're saved. So we gather around and we have a, a, a good time. We had a good time there Friday night. A, a great multitude of people there. Probably, probably Brother Eddie thought he'd never get through frying, frying burgers and dogs. He had a good helper, Bryson. Oh, he could flip those things. He could flip them. Oh, he might flip one off one time. <laughs> Hot dogs too. So, but it was it was a good time, and uh, I'm hoping people enjoyed it. Well, my belly did, especially the hamburger. But that's part of being at home, isn't it? It's having a good time. Sharing one another's burdens. Now we have, all have burdens, don't we? And we can share them when we get in this place. I'm talking to Jerry Broyles back there at the their Bible school, and he's talking about the problems he had with his stomach and just different things, you know. He was sharing a burden. And uh, well, we can share burdens like that and pray for one another. Now with... As we go on down, he says that in verse 5, he says uh, they have a form of godliness. That's, that's that is really sad when you think about that people that are around that have a form of godliness, and, uh, but they deny the power thereof. They have a form of God, but deny the power thereof. The only power we have is from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Only power we have. And he tells us here, from such turn away. You know, we don't be listening to that, that kind. That, that think they have that kind of a power or they deny the power or have that form of God as is. Turn away. 
run, get away. A lot of them will, have, will deceive you. They'll deceive you. Some think they are something when they're really nothing. So we got to keep that in mind. The seventh, oh, I'll drop down to the seventh verse. And it, it talks about all these things that, and people that, in general. And uh, it says, it says, turn away. Then it talks about the, the, they creep into houses and live captive, silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. But it says, and, and it's maybe us, it may be others, and uh, we've got to be careful. It says, ever <clears throat> learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We've got to really realize that. There's many out there, they're ever learning, but they're never come to the knowledge of truth. What is truth? He is. He is truth. And, only, and truth comes from him. And all this, and he is love. It just all be thank, titles you can give the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He loves us. He, he uh, helps us. He, he's truth. And if we want knowledge, ask. He's wise. Who's the wisest man in the world? Solomon had all that wisdom. But he messed up, didn't he? Who gave him that knowledge? God. If we lack wisdom, ask of God. Ask him. And we think about the ninth verse in closing, but they shall proceed no further, for the folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. And it's talked about Jameis and Jamers which stood Moses and then talked about these men had a corrupt mind, a reprobate concerning the faith. Uh, they, they, uh, no doubt was stowed Moses. Uh, and uh, he talked about resist them. Resist. And uh, the truth is what they did. And men of corrupt mind, reprobate, concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for the folly shall be manifest to all men, as theirs was also. So we've we got a great work to do at Limestone. I think uh, we just all say that we got to follow up on the children that were saved during Bible school. We've got to follow up on parents that came, uh, teenagers that came, uh, just everything in general, a follow up that we can uh, help others to, to see the need to get involved in church, I think for, for all those that helped Jane out and got involved in all this, you know, and, and uh, the teaching, uh, those that come in and did crafts and different things, it was really, really good uh, to see all the decorations. It's, and, you know, each one of those have a talent uh, of some sort. If you if you been around limestone, they used to sing a song. You have a talent, use it for the Lord. If you don't use it, you will surely lose it. You have a talent, use it for the Lord. You know, each one of us have a talent. I don't know what yours is, and uh, I, I know what part of mine is. Uh, or most all of it really speaking and. Uh, would work and just a very little bit of electricity until it bites me then I eh, better call electrician um, 
I'll, but you think about what, what has God blessed you with? A talent that you could use for his honor and glory. I think about Brother Larry back there. He has a talent. Storytelling, he has a talent on a computer. Um, I've been trying to get him to teach me how to do operate uh, Outlook. I still haven't learned it um, on a computer. So we got to help one another along our journey, can't we? You know, the biggest thing we could do for one another is pray for one another. And pray for our families. You might have a word of testimony, anything to say tonight. Anyone? You want me to dismiss? You want to dismiss? If all minds are clear, let's stand together. <clears throat> I'm glad you're here tonight. Just, just remember the prayer request, uh, especially be praying for uh, Tim and Brandy and Emily, uh, all, what day they're coming back, but they need their prayers. Um, traffic gets pretty, pretty rough in the Nashville area, so uh, coming and going. Um, pray for Kai. Uh, he's in. Got out of the milk, got come in last night, flew in, and um, he'll probably s try to get him a job in the field that he went through AIT doing, and that's uh, working on vehicles. So remember him. Anything else? Jane, we dismiss this.